You're listening to Graphic Novel Explorers Club Podcast, an audio book club. Thanks for checking out today's episode of Graphic Novel Explorers Club. I'm one of your hosts, Johnny. I am joined by Dennis and our special guest host, Veronica. Both of them weren't here when I recorded this intro, so I'm having to do that for them. This is also the kickoff to our summer special. We'll have four episodes taking a different look, a different approach to how we normally do our regular episodes. And today we are discussing The Unicorn and the Fox by writer Nick Bain and artist Nick Acuna. We hope you've already read today's titles because all three of us have read the book. So beware, spoilers ahead. We would love for you to share your opinion and thoughts with us. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at GN Explorers Club. Leave a comment on our Facebook page or email us at GNExplorersClub at gmail.com. Graphic Novel Explorers Club is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are available. All right, everybody. So, yeah, today we are looking at The Unicorn and the Fox. We've got parts one and two. And this was written by Nick Bain and art by Nick Acuna. Did I say that right? Acuna? That sounds right to me. Acuna Matata? That was a dumb joke. I bet you that guy hears that. Stupid joke all the time. <laughs> Way to go. He hates you now. <laughs> and it looks like the book was published by Arc Entertainment LLC. Looking at the cover, which is uh, most of the main characters, I thought this book, it reminded me a lot of... Last Unicorn? Last Unicorn and The Secret of Nim. The Last Unicorn? Yeah. Because it has a unicorn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it's got, it's got that <laughs> okay. kind of dreamy... It's got a 70s, I painted this on the side of my van feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> and and Ralph Bashke and the, the illustration team that did like uh, German- Hobbit. Well, that's Bashke. Yeah. That was Ralph Bashke. But uh, no, the, the team that did uh, Five Old Mouskowitz movies and Land Before Time. It just reminded me of that hmm. era, like that 70s, 80s era that you. But the art inside the book is slightly different, I would say. Yeah, it was. I felt it was pretty mature, but not mature compared to the, some of the stuff we've read before. Yeah. Uh, so it starts off with, there once was a universe full of peace, wonder, and innocence. To some, it would seem infinitely bigger than our own. And to others, it would appear to be smaller than the tiniest grain of sand. I don't know what that really had to do with the book. <laughs> you sound like a South Park character. Um, <laughs> I think it was it was decent world setting. I mean, they're trying to give an idea of what's going on. It's kind of confusing. The realms. It. I don't quite understand it because they talk about realms, which usually means different dimensions. Yeah. But then there's different planets. But they seem to talk about planets more than galaxies. realms. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, kind of getting into this, the story, as, as we're starting it, these other worlds have fallen, and I guess they're they're sort of like the. It seems like they're taken by some kind of darkness. Yeah, somehow. which reminded me of the Neverending Story, right? Where the darkness, literally, the darkness is taking over imagination or destroying imagination. I guess it's nothing. Yeah, or the nothing. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. So I don't know the if no- I missed the, the narrative, <laughs> but okay. So they describe what is it? Six, six worlds. Uh, well, five plus glow. Well, right? One, two, three, four. Is that five. what it is? Because I thought End was one of the worlds. So they, what? Where's End? End was like the last one they mentioned, but Glow is not mentioned until they talk about. Yeah. So Glow's not mentioned what? in the, the narrative. Yeah. But but all these other. It takes place in in Glow. I completely agree. Okay, okay. That was my problem. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was that it, it was Glow is not mentioned. Uh, I, I didn't see Mariah I Carey. All disagree. <laughs> I I think it says it's Augustus, Shimo, Fay, Temple, and Centra, and then in the center of it all is a very special place called Glow. Not Centra, Glow. No, I know. I'm just making the point of like Centra. Oh. You would think Centra would be the center, but but oh yeah. So I all, see. As the story as it begins, or we come to find out, all these other quote unquote realms or worlds have fallen to this darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what's his name? The ambassador? The chancellor? The chancellor. That's it. 
You mean Thanos? <laughs> Looking for the Infinity Stones? Yeah, that's kind of what it. That's kind of what it seems like. The I mean, story is about. Oh. Yeah. As somebody who's never seen uh, that uh, far into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, did not catch that. So oh. glad felt super original to me. Yeah, so it starts off giving a rundown of, and it seemed like it was doing some really cool world building. Like there was Augustus, which is this kind of purpley pink with giants and and um, some sort of like deer like creature running around. And then Shimo was there was a giant raccoon, and it seemed to be more of a Japanese influence, Eastern influence. I but then it gets was... weird. And then Faye, which is like a floating train. Like yeah, the, I don't it's know. It's like Cloud steampunk? City. I don't know. It's Cloud City meets Steampunk, yeah. yeah. With astronauts. And like, then, yeah. But but then Temple seems similar because that's also like cogs. So that seemed yeah. like another. But it's more like fire. And no creatures. And no creatures. Yeah, it's just. And then Sintra, which is like a swampy. It's like they're. Uh, Yoda. A, <laughs> no, it's like they're, uh, what's the forest that Christopher Robinson goes oh, to? Oh, Thousand Acre Woods. <laughs> yeah, that's like yeah, that's a hundred, a hundred acre woods. Don't be crazy. Well, clearly someone, <laughs> someone didn't watch the sequels where they go in the future and it's a thousand now acre a, woods. No, it would have oh, been. That's, this been, was like after humans uh, and the woods have taken over, right? Yeah, you haven't watched The Matrix. Oh, I see. Poo. Uh-huh. <laughs> a millennia okay. from now to be yeah. a thousand acre wood. Gotcha. Johnny Mnemonic meets Pooh. It's really, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good. Scene. Um, so, so the, so you're introduced to these different realms, which don't really have, um, uh, too much to do with the story, other than there was there's, some sort of. Gym. There's no information beyond the name of it. Yeah, and yeah, and that's it. And then, and, and honestly, I mean, given the short picture you're, you're given. You're not entirely sure what occupies those worlds. Humanoids, machine robots. Yeah. Uh, Astronauts. The the, yeah. the, the uh, engineers for that floating train look like they're wearing NASA oh, yeah. astronaut gear. I wonder if it's like aspects of one world, you know, because they've got the trees and then this Shimo. I, I kind of saw that. Um, as the mountain, I don't know why, but I interpreted that as being like a big mountain in the shape of a fox. Um, mm. So oh, I was sh- just wondering if if these were. So you think that's a fox? I thought that was a rat. And you think that's the oh? It's almost like um, the Thundercats lair. All right. <laughs> yes, exactly. I <laughs> know exactly I think, what you're talking. I didn't think about. of that as a mountain. I thought that was just like a spirit. That's just my interpretation. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I like that sure. better than but, my spirit um, idea. I mean, it could be either or both. Um, but yeah, I thought maybe it was like certain aspects of this world, you know, so they've got like mm. the train uh, and then, you know, the cogs might be like machinery. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a stretch, but maybe they aren't like worlds per se. But then I guess I don't know. Or maybe well, it's... like like we said, they go back and forth between saying realms and worlds and worlds and galaxies and I don't know. If um, right. Yeah, <laughs> we spent a lot well, of time because... trying to figure out the beginning of this book. <laughs> you know what's really interesting is this is like flat Earth, uh, flat Earth theory because glow oh, right. is flat and they can reach the edge oh, of it. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I if they're planets or not, but oh, that could buy into the whole realm thing where they're just kind of floating in the ether, and you know, invisible walls and all that kind of stuff. I think we should move on because we've spent seven <laughs> minutes trying to figure out what's okay. What, so we're introduced to Buddy, the yeah, unicorn. So, anyway, that's the, and, and it's such a weird introduction. So they're talking, they're building out the world, and then there's a door, and it's knock, knock, knock. Wake up, Buddy, with this weird mask on it, with like light glowing around the edges of right. the door, right? And that, and then that's it, and then it jumps to the you know this place with all of the unicorns. And yeah. honestly, it's weird to me that, um, you know, you have all these fancy names for the realms, and then you have Buddy, Buddy. and yeah. Aunt Dolly. And I was like, what, is this Hicksville? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Gomer? Yeah. Well, there Where's is a, there's a Gooch. Gooch. Which is, oh, yeah. Right. I thought that was so s- silly. Which it was is, silly. Which is another name for Taint. Oh. Like, <laughs> you never heard of the I Gooch? I didn't know that. No. Yeah. That's there's the, Jet. Jet, one of the unicorns is named Jet. He's yeah. the fast one. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. I know. It's suddenly <laughs> My Little Pony. <laughs> he he would have been, uh, who's who's the uh, guy from Spider-Man that always 
beats up Spider-Man before he becomes Spider-Man. Beats up Peter Parker. What? Is the football player. Oh, Flash Thompson. He would be the Flash Thompson yeah, in this totally. film. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, uh, we're introduced to Buddy, who is our protagonist. He is a unicorn that's missing his corn. Um, and and then this realm, the unicorns don't have like a... Uh, Not on their forehead. It's like yeah, on their... Yeah, with a spirally kind of beautiful horn. They just have like a rhinoceros horn coming mm-hmm. out of their their snout so and then we're also in- introduced which i thought was like some kind of fox bat so i thought this was the fox was his buddy lexus who's a bat i guess right it's like a yeah some kind of bat yeah. creature um you know another thing about this story too is some of the there's no humans in this realm or this existence as far as we know and so but some of the animals are anthropomorphic and others are like buddy or his buddy buddy's buddy who are basically just animals that can talk and what's weird too is um when they're going off to meet the princess right beforehand you see a couple of centurions but you never see them again you never see centurions ever yeah, again I just uh, I, i'm just curious if there's some sort of the centaurs yeah okay that i missed on like why some animals are anthropomorphic and others aren't or if you're a lower class are you mm-hmm. considered is it like Sort of racial discrimination, where right. if you walk on four legs, well then you're like you get names like Buddy, and you live out in the woods. <laughs> but if you're anthropomorphic, you know you get to go into higher society. You get regal names. There's like a caste. I shouldn't say uh, racism, but like a caste system. Totally system based upon if you walk upright or not. Come to find out, Buddy's gonna compete in this race, race, and that's where you meet the other horse that Jet that messes with them and. Basically teases him and says you're not going to win the race, which he doesn't. Um, He's such a typical like schoolyard bully. But it seems to be a big deal because the queen is there with her entourage. Mm-hmm. So it seems like it's maybe like a jousting tournament, but instead of jousting, they race. Yeah, and there's like upright animals competing against the horses and birds, which I you've, I feel like the bird would just win right away. <laughs> You would think the bird would win every single time because they would just like, oh, I'm just going to fly. Instead of going the loop, I'm just going to fly right to the finish line. Well, it's not that kind of a race. Right, because they're trying to catch that. It's a that. chasing kind Oh, of, that's right. That's yeah. right. Whatever that's that right. creature was. Was it like a... I don't know. It's the it's Ewok the, thing. The foxy <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. There's so many fox looking things. I kept thinking, which one is the fox? <laughs> I've already identified at least one unicorn. <laughs> I want to know which one is a goddamn fox. <laughs> you already uh, faked me out with the bat fox. Yeah. And then you, then you faked me out with the little chase fox. And I was like, <laughs> chase fox? <laughs> so, th- so then this is after the race. He Buddy loses to Jet. And they walk to the edge of their existence. Which is um, weird, too. Like, I guess your world isn't that big. Like, how you just, oh, here we are at the end of the universe. Well, it's like maybe, well, maybe they, they just live right on yeah, the edge. Like, they're yeah. like in San Diego, you okay. know, like they're equivalent of San Diego. Like, they're the, mm-hmm. the beach is the end of, you know, where how far you right. can go when for them it's the edge of their earth, their planet. Which I thought this was going to come into play later. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe he was going to run towards the edge and the bad guy, he would dart at the last minute and the bad guy would go over the edge, but that didn't really ever happen. Yeah. But you know what's interesting is that this, uh, what's his name, Lexus? Is that his, his buddy's the, the buddy? Friend, the friend, buddy's bat. buddy? Yeah, the bat. He, he he says, whoa, what is this place? Like, he's never seen it before. <laughs> I don't know, dude, don't you live here? Uh, my mom says I can't go over there, right. so like, I've never <laughs> been there. Like, Thanks for showing me, buddy. <laughs> I'm assuming he talks like 80, right. 80s Keanu. So anyway, they see this weird blue ball, which is what we've seen in the other worlds that went to darkness. It's like a blue ball with black smoke around it. Mm-hmm. And they panic. They decide to go back. It's too late. Uh, the thing lands. It looks like Oogie Boogie from, <laughs> from Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. <laughs> decides to come on board. O- Oogie Boogie combined with um, the nothing from... right. Never ending story. And declares himself he's the chancellor. Which it seems like they're all shocked it's there. And this is the first time they're seeing it. But they've but heard then of they've him. They've all recognize what's Well, at least the Queen has heard of him. And you know what? I I mean, I guess that makes sense. If if the Queen has heard of this person before, meets this person with such 
antagonism immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like doesn't even give this person a chance. I guess I wish there was a little more world building because I felt Mm -hmm. like I wasn't sure like when they said, oh, we've heard of you. Like how have you, have you heard other, do you talk to other realms? Right. Do you like, is there, Yeah. you know, is this still the same galaxy? I'm not really clear how you've heard this guy's reputation. And then you know he's a bad guy, one, because of he arrived in a big giant black cloud. A butterfly lands on his hand and he sucks the butterfly into his. He eats the light. Yeah. Like a juicy fruit. (laughs) 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 This is is what cracks me up. The queen says, I've heard of you, Chancellor. You feed off a life so you can spread your darkness. Your illness has taken over the galaxy. It ends here. And then he says, well, why must everyone say such horrible things? Like, <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Fake news. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it cracked me up. Yeah. Um, Petty it, gossip, vile rumors. Yeah, it's... And then he gives them the, the stupid villain choice. You can have freedom or death. <laughs> and freedom is just like, bend to my will. Right. Are you free to die? I don't know. I yeah, don't know exactly what his freedom... Yeah, so weird. Anyway, they, so they decided to attack him, right? Yeah. So then the Queen's forces try to attack him. The I guess the unicorns try to charge him. And then he uses his bizarro Green Lantern Black Force powers to entrap them in some sort of like yeah, black and, smoke, right? And Jet, the antagonistic horse, rallies like all the forest creatures. Come and, on, bros. Yeah, and it's like, come on, buddy. And he's like, <laughs> I can't. And, and then they, they call them lions, but they're like just black beasts. I, yeah, I don't understand why they call them lions either because they didn't even resemble lions well it would have been cool uh, if they had shown in one of the other realms like the lions defending and they fall and and now they're shadow creatures yeah like to show the transition from one to the other i think would have been a a really cool way of because they're 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 neat like i like the way they're drawn Mm -hmm. they they're interesting creatures but it would have been cool to see what they to see them you know get morphed from the good creature to now these bad creatures well, you're assuming that they do i don't think that that's necessarily the case that's true, yeah, you know that i true. i think that's a really interesting uh interpretation i didn't actually uh think of that i just assumed that that was something that he just created with all of his magic his, his dust magic his I, dust magic i yeah. was in both fields i wasn't sure if he just made dust magic bunnies or um <laughs> lines or he corrupted the creatures and they become shadows of themselves because mm-hmm. you know he was entrapping them for a reason so yeah, yeah so he winds up using his cloud magic dust magic to entrap the queen and all of the people that fought against him and of course the dummy buddy gets missed somehow i don't know how that works well he out. ran away oh so because he was too cowardly he's like we're not gonna and he has no horn and he has no horn which again i thought maybe that was gonna Come into was play. he born without the horn? It was it chopped off? It's, it's mystery. It's not ever. And his parents abandoned him. So does that have something to do with it? Right, because he's buddy. He's a piece of shit. Aww, <laughs> but his buddy. aunt loves him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Supposedly. turns out the no. chancellor is looking Aww. for the amulet, and he's already collected a bunch. And you, <laughs> he's well, it's pretty much like he has all of them except for this yeah. one. So he's pretty much Thanos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's looking for the final one. And he's basically saying freedom or death, and the queen is like refusing, and then she convinces Buddy, Buddy to look for the fox, right, for the fox, which is basically Obi Wan, right, <laughs> exactly. Without help me, fox, you're my only hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then Buddy is now uh, given his quest to go seek out the fox and get power. I don't. We don't know. It's yeah. very vague. Just find the fox. Is, yeah. You know, I mean, what I did she maybe, say? Like the fox was going to be the holder of this last thing that the uh, um, the chancellor wants. Is that his name? The chancellor? Yeah. I almost, I keep wanting to call him the ambassador, but. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor. Yeah. Uh, but that never really comes into play. He, no. And then, okay. In classic cryptic uh, speak, she goes, he'll send you a sign. Yeah. Motherfucker, I'm trying to help you. Be more specific. <laughs> if you need me to find the fox, tell me specifically what you need me to do. Not yeah. he'll give you a sign. Like, hey, look, I'm the only one. I don't know that's, if you noticed. I don't have a horn, so you yeah, really need to give me more information. Because that's the end of issue one. 
And then issue two starts off with Finn, which to my F I N N, but Finn has always been the, the end. end. And what is that Italian or? Yeah. Yeah. So, or French. Or French, yeah, one of the two. So, Buddy is but now... But it's really the beginning. Ooh, yeah. Deep. <laughs> uh, yeah, and actually didn't notice that the first time. The end or... is the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> but who's Finn? I think that literally means end. Yeah, but it's F-I-N-N. I thought maybe Finn was going to be... Uh, the fox? Maybe we finally fucking find the fox. <laughs> maybe uh, we find the fox. I know, he meets but, the fox. But it's not his just, name, right? But, like, what does Finn have to do with anything? I have no idea. I don't know. That's a good question. So it starts off with... Uh, he's, yeah, he's supposed to look for the sign, and starts off with Buddy running. Apparently with outrunning the... The mist thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, how. I mean, he is pretty fast. Yeah. He's he almost won the race. Kind of like Forrest Gump. Horse comes really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Um, so he's he's feeling pretty down about he doesn't know what to do or where to start. And he runs into Auntie, his Aunt Dolly. Right. He basically goes back to his house. Yeah. Her house. Yeah. She's hiding I in I thought this scene was cable. sad. You know, really? he because doesn't she's believe really in sick. himself. Right. And, you know, he's been charged with this uh, quest. I don't know. I definitely had le- not quite a as a um um I I don't know if I would say that I liked it but I sort of thought of them as children and maybe that this comic was more geared towards kids. That's what Dennis was saying beforehand and I, I just wasn't it's sure just like that's what I thought already. <laughs> it's true. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I now that you now that you've both said that, I kind of I'm trying to look at it through mm-hmm. that lens of, yeah, this is probably more for young adults or children. Yeah, like a, a mystical, mm-hmm. like eight to twelve or something like yeah. that. Kind of like know? the Dark Crystal esque. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Totally. Like it's very obvious, like evil and good. You know, and well, there is some moral ambiguity, I guess, a little bit later, but it's very obvious at this point. You know, in the first uh, issue. You know, there's the good guys and the bad guys, and he's got this like quest, and it's you know very yeah. typical like um, hero's quest. Yeah, the twelve steps of the hero, and right, yeah, yeah, and he's got this like fatal flaw, and um, yeah. So I thought it was maybe just for kids. Yeah, yeah. So he runs into his auntie, and she says, or he's doubting himself, and says, you know, I, I come from a line of cowards, and my mom and dad abandoned me. Mm-hmm. And she basically tells him, like, you know, just because that's who they are doesn't mean that's who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, you should have hope and courage. And she sends him on his way right. to go continue his quest. And then we cut back to the chancellor and the queen kind of having a standoff about uh, what the he's, amulet. Yeah, basically. what he's there to do. Which I don't know. It didn't really. It's just more bad guy espousing. Yeah. yeah, that's what it felt like. You know, just, I don't know if there was more to it, but you know, he says like, "Look into my eyes, and what do you see?" And she basically just like shits on him. You know, <laughs> which I don't know. It's just it was so obvious. But this but, is the best part. What, what what is this? Either they they've been going back and forth, and the chancellor comes to find out that uh, someone escaped, and this is where he yells, "Gooch!" And this took like, his main. <laughs> This main, yeah, main lion, shadow lion, uh-huh. to that sends about to go track down Buddy and and the fox. I just love that the gooch. <laughs> I and wonder if just... the other guy's named Boner. <laughs> God. <laughs> so gooch. this is for kids. Well, he used gooch in there. Yeah, hey, it's just all right. Boner was a main character on Growing Pains, and that's true. And like we all knew at ten years old, that what kid's that name is. Boner? <laughs> <laughs> it is really I, weird. Yeah. yeah. Like, why would you name basically a kid erection? <laughs> well, I nickname. think because he pulled a boner it's not all a the nickname? time. Nickname? Yeah. You don't, wouldn't assume that that was a nickname. Well, even for a, for a family show that you shouldn't use that as a nickname. I'm I'm gonna guess Boner's backstory is when they were like in the tenth or eleventh grade. <laughs> Oh, God. He got a major boner in class, and then that's and stood up and was and like all the other kids saw it, and that was from there on out. He was boner. Mm. It was not a, no one's nickname. You can't make your own nickname, but mm-hmm. that was one where he's like, "Come on, guys, please don't call me boner." Or he just fully accepted. He's like, "That's right, I'm the boner." <laughs> that's interesting. Anyway, back to this kid's <laughs> back, book. Back yeah, to- I uh, just wanted to say this is such weird logic here. This scene where he's like going back and forth with the chancellor and the queen are going back and forth. I just don't like what's the point here? He says, 
that uh, the queen says that, he, you know, she sees weakness in his eyes, that he, he just feeds off others. And then he says, no, I'm the creator and I'm going to rule with the power of the amulet. But I just don't understand why he thinks he's some kind of savior. Mm. Like, where is that coming from? We have no Right. Idea. I mean, I think that's where some more backstory for him. I mean, at least with Thanos, you could tell he wanted to save the universe in his own twisted way, right? You're the you're the yeah. hero you of your own story. Logic. You get his logic right. of, you know, the 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 solar system is maxed out. People are starving, they're dying, there's sickness, there's illness because we've overpopulated. We're we're destroying nature because we're just taking over everything. So my solution is I'm going to kill everybody. See, that doesn't make any sense. Nature is going to take its course. You know, if these people are starving, guess what? They're going to die. Well, he feels like he's speeding up nature. Yeah. he's His solution is I'll wipe out half of everything and then we've got enough for everybody. So that's what we needed from the chancellor was a little more reasoning. Yeah. That- it would, like it would have been interesting to see if he was on a, a, a previous realm that had those types of problems and, mm-hmm. He lost a family member or mm-hmm. something, and that was his solution was, well, nobody else, I'll just take over everything and control it mm-hmm. with an iron fist so right. that nobody else, you know, without any um, free will. Well, later on, problems. does he go into that? I sort of seem to remember that he says, like, well, my people uh, all turned on me, and isn't there something about that? Maybe it's later I on. Forget. So, uh, Although you do get a glimpse, we're going to skip a bit, just for me to say this, but you do get a glimpse where like a butterfly lands on him mm-hmm. and his face changes. Right. And he doesn't seem as evil. And he actually- Yeah, like yeah. The, the cloud. That was that moral ambiguity that I was talking right. about. So you don't know like maybe he but, was a good person at one point right. and got yeah. corrupted. So then the queen's fox that they were chasing kind of lies to him and says- Talks up buddy. Yeah, basically. like mm-hmm. our fiercest warrior is on- The case. The case, basically. <laughs> and he's got a- The chancellor has a- Glowing, wa- uh, cane? Oh, like a staff. No, he I, he's got everything. He's got I the just, glowing staff. He's got uh the throne with all the the um the infinity stones on it. I mean, he's got every like bad guy. <laughs> he went he went to Evangeline's and said, "Give me all <laughs> the bad guy tropes. I want a cape. Yeah, I want a glowing staff. He and I want wear a, a cape. A, a skull like face. Yeah. Like yeah, a jacket. That's what I mean. Duster. Yeah, <laughs> duster. a duster. Yeah, even better." <laughs> Even more evil. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's my evil duster. I like this too. So we catch back up to Buddy. He's like, I've been at this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, the Chancellor sends like his lion. so hungry, thirsty. What's that? A garden, the sign. I just like that. <laughs> right. He's like, squirrel. Yeah, and then he's almost hit by lightning. Well, he is hit. Like the, the Chancellor's lions, where the fuck they are. Uh, chase after him. They're about to get him, and then he's hit by blue lightning. Yeah, and then apparently falls to his death. They see that, which later turns out to be a hologram. Right, fake out. Which I, this realm doesn't seem like it has. <laughs> like they are forest dwellers, and seems like medieval ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they have hologram technology. Like you don't see anything. Was it a hologram or was it like that's a spell? exactly what he says? Yeah. It's oh. a hologram. The fox okay. says it's isn't a hologram. that what he says? Yeah. Because he wakes it's up. It's a hologram, right? Yeah. He he falls to his death. You you, what you assume is his death, mm-hmm. and then come to find out the fox had created this hologram. But yeah, it was just like, well, there's no sign of technology on this planet. But you know, maybe some of the it's other, a magic hologram. Some yeah. of the other realms had fucking space trains and cogs. <laughs> so <Space trains. laughs> you know, an astronaut. So who knows what's capable? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Then we see that scene with the the chancellor. Where he's got the planets, each planet, or it's his infinity infinity stone. stone. Right. Infinity planets are floating right. above That's his chair. That's back a little bit, but and uh, then and then the butterfly lands on him and he reverts forward back forward a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, no, I don't know how to parallel park <laughs> when we're talking. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is all around the same time. Um, all right. So so the the yeah he thinks he's in he's seeing a, his body, but come to find out the fox is now he's now met the fox and the fox is like i made a hologram i'm right. thinking it's magic because his staff the the fox also has a red glowing amulet staff and mm-hmm. so maybe he's using magic he calls yeah it a hologram, i mean but... we can only speculate at this point oh yeah so here's the line that uh veronica was talking about chancellor says uh after his face reverts back to um 
his Chancel evil self, space. right? He says, banished by my own galaxy, I wandered. My own planet was barren. Then we discovered this nebula. See this fucking realms, nebula See, galaxy? <laughs> I totally didn't read it like that. I was like, banished by my own realm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a I list. wandered. <laughs> oh, he's got a speech about then, it. Then we discovered he was the just, nebula. He was just a kid. I just pictured and him like... And we evolved much beyond your planet. <laughs> we I just pictured it like, no a little, like a little kid, you know? <laughs> he's just a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read it like that, but okay, Pe- sure. People, Very entertaining. People picked on him so much for yeah. his speech impediment that he turned evil. Bullying. No, this is what happens. Kids when you don't bully. say ours. They do by a certain age, but but he's a little kid. He's an adult, and he's got a speech impediment. They're all kids. You think they're kids? I made that head canon that they're all just children. <laughs> oh, it's like it. <laughs> it's like what? Like it? Oh. They're all kids. Yeah. So something bad happened uh, to him, and he was somehow betrayed. Um, does it say in here that he that he was the only one betrayed, but all of his people? It says, well, just like you said, banished by my own galaxy, I wandered. My so it's own, not like just him. My planet was barren. Then we disco- then we discovered this nebula, and we evolved much beyond your planet. We had so color who, you could never even imagine. So who banished him? He or, was the galaxy banished him. But then he went to a nebula. But a nebula is in a galaxy. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. That's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So banished by my own galaxy. So the what? galaxy got together, get- had a vote. How do you get banished by a galaxy? And but, then it says, then we discovered this nebula. Who's we? The, his, his, his lions. People. Royal we. Oh, his lions. Yeah. Or, but, and then my planet was barren. So wait, if it was barren, did you make it barren? Maybe that's why he was, ga- <laughs> maybe that's why he was. Yeah, maybe he sucked, the all, the, sucked uh, out all the light and color from it. I don't know, man. Someone needed to like maybe workshop his origin story. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. That's, you know, kind of d- jumping ahead to like my final critique that's what i feel like this book it does doesn't feel like I, I had a friend who wrote a book several years ago like a decade ago and it was long it was like a 600 page book and i kept telling him I was like S- sit on it man write it put it away for six months then come back to it do the same thing and and then pass it around after six months pass it around less like i will give you an honest critique of your book and then sit on it again put it in put it away for like six months or a year then come back and write it. And all he did was one revision and then put it out. And it was kind of like this where it was, it had the seedlings of being a really good story, but it just wasn't executed the right way. And that's how I feel with this book. It's just, it's got some really good threads. They're just not woven together well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he really should have done what, you know, what they do on TV shows, which is make a show Bible and maybe like make a consistent language and 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 theory of how things came together because as you see coming through uh, just a few pages later buddy is talking with the uh, the fox guy i forget i don't know is his name finn i don't know what the fuck his name is it's anyway fox fox and he's talking about the planet shimo so he calls it planet so we've talked about realms and in Nebulas. the be- and in the beginning it said mm-hmm. the realm of shimo but now this guy's like uh shimo is a peaceful planet and then i think this is where we solidify that in fact that Fox thing is a statue because mm-hmm. it's right there, and you know, the Chancellor had come to visit the planet, promised peace. Turned out it wasn't a great deal, and they sent Fox out in a space boat. It's one of like a space yeah. pirate, space you know, like 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 Cal L from Krypton. See What's you later, that son. One Disney movie, or maybe it's DreamWorks. No, Parent, there's there's a Treasure Trap? Planet. Yeah, oh. Treasure Planet. Yeah, That's yeah, Disney. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not Parent Trap. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Parent Trap. Yeah, so, Parent Trap didn't have a space oh, boat. Damn it. Yeah, so Fox gives us a little bit more backstory on how his realm got taken over by yeah. or mm-hmm. his planet got taken over by Chancellor. He brought darkness. And and their realm, Buddy's realm, has the last amulet, which happens to be the most powerful of them all. Mm-hmm. I bet spoiler, I bet the amulet's in his fucking horn that got cut off. <laughs> That's what I think it happened. They had to cut it off because it had the fucking amulet in it, and it's hidden somewhere. And his parents probably dumped him, a la Ray from Force no. Awakens, because they wanted to protect him, not really Kind of like Harry Potter's parents, how uh, yeah. they were trying to protect him but died. That's yeah. total speculation. You have no idea why Ray's parents abandoned her. 
they were gambler trash per Rilo. Well, the Chancellor is very Kylo Ren. So anyway. Kylo Ren. I was thinking Rilo, uh, <laughs> Kylo Riley, <laughs> the band. Right. Uh, different. <laughs> Slightly different. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so then the fox restores Buddy's horn, which... Well, it, not even that. He just attaches the amulet. And he says, oh, good, perfect fit. Like, the amulet is just a horn. You know what I mean? Like right. It's moldable clay. Well, it transforms. Yeah. Yeah, magic. whatever. It's magic. Don't Fucking question. magic. Don't you believe in it's magic? It's a hologram. I believe yeah. it's magic, magic. I believe it's magic, magic. So That's- now Buddy's got this uber... This like magic saber. point. It's got, it's, it's got like, it's got like uh, Nordic scrolls right. on mm-hmm. it now. And and then, yeah, so then the Chancellor, we forgot to say this, sends the lions back out mm-hmm. to right, make sure. Right, because he seems to recognize like blue lightning. Yeah. And so right. he's so, like obviously clued into. That scene Fox. was also another one of those. It's like, oh, that's weird. Like t- not. Well, it's comedic. It felt very Disney-like to me. Did you say a strike? <laughs> of blue lightning <laughs> and that's exactly how it's written here that's yeah. how these, the, the bubbles are <laughs> the, the bubbles are broken out just like that yeah. right. why uh, uber dramatic it's so weird. yeah so the lions come down into this cave that the fox and buddy are in <laughs> this is funny too They're all, let's search the cave and you hear <laughs> clippity clap clippity yeah, clap, right. clippity clap. <laughs> um, I just imagine the the squire from uh, Monty Python, Monty Python oh, yeah. with yeah. his coconuts, and you see electricity f- kind of shooting out of the end of the the unicorn. And one of them's like, "What is that?" And then the other black lions, like, "Hey, you, stop!" <laughs> like they're <laughs> like they're security guards at the mall. <laughs> Freeze! <laughs> and then hey, Buddy charges them, yeah, a la Thor, and runs out of the cave. And then the fox says he'll distract them as yeah. long as he can. And then it is Obi Wan. And then, and then that's the end of issue two. <laughs> so that was like 90 pages. That's actually pretty, issue one and two combined. That's actually pretty long. Mm-hmm. Typically a comic book's about 22, 24 pages. Mm. So we read about four issues. And um, yeah, I don't know where the fucking story's going. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're probably right onto something where Buddy's horn. Well, obviously he was destined for something. I think right. that's what they're trying to say. Right. That he was destined. Like he didn't have a horn. So now he's destined to have this amulet. So he's like, uh, you know, some kind of like chosen one. Right. Or whatever. He's Neo and yeah. Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neo, Combined. Skywalker all rolled into and, one. Uh, and uh, a horse that won the Triple Crown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, not California Chrome. Whatever his name was, her name was. Why, who names horses? <laughs> anyway. They always have crazy names. Yeah. Anyway, well, clearly not the person who wrote this book because they named it Buddy. <laughs> hey, Buddy. You're our savior, Buddy. <laughs> hi, hi, Buddy. Yeah. You're going to um, save the realm. <laughs> maybe the, maybe this world's built around uh, the Florida panhandle. <laughs> I'm Mr. Ed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I honestly don't know what to say about this. I thought it was really juvenile. So I, that's why I thought it was specifically for kids. So I think kids would like this story. I think I think it's it, it is very colorful and... It's really pretty. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's definitely a pretty book, uh, and I think kids would really like the images on it. And yeah, you know, it's not overly gory. It seems no, like no, it's no, meant no. to be a juvenile, mm-hmm. yeah, book, yeah. and in a good way. Yeah, uh, not like a juvenile behavior, but yeah. just it's meant for kids. Yeah. That being said. That being said, yes, I, I feel like the story could have used some more work. Mm-hmm. And like you were saying, Dennis, like if they had had a Bible mm-hmm. for the story of like. Here's the reality of this world. Here's the rules. Right. You know, um, here's how we're going to explain everything. Mm-hmm. It, it does the world building, but it just doesn't, it, at the beginning, it just doesn't. It's not enough. It's, yeah. It's just it felt like, rushed. Right. There's too many rushed. holes. There's too many questions about like, well, wait, where did he come from? And who's, who is this? And why do we care? You know? Yeah. Honestly, if, if you wanted to say, well, we'll expand that later, then make it more of a mystery. Just introduce Glow. And then have some fucking sage go, oh, and guess what? There's these other realms. What? I've never heard of that before. And then use yeah, some then other he character. As, as he's running away, he hits the edge of his world. And there's a port. His, 
Yeah. He's now gotten the the amulet as his horn, and that like opens up a portal to the next realm. Right. And then he goes in there, and you know he starts picking up his sidekicks and stuff like mm-hmm. that that are, or his like the sage wizard who's going to help him along his way, and uh, yeah, have it have it be more magical and. Mm-hmm. But he's discovering everything at the same time the reader is. Yeah, you know, the the writing isn't the best, but you know what? Having read a lot of um, initial books from some pretty amazing authors, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, who's responsible for like uh, a lot of the modern Marvel universe, yeah, uh, yeah, all sorts of amazing stories. We read one of his initial books, and I would have to say that was really derivative, and. This one I felt felt original enough to me, and mat- a little bit mature. It, it felt nostalgic, but still moving kind of forward. Yeah, and know. I could totally see someone reading this if I if I were to get a better picture. I think the problem I had was that normally we get a complete story arc. This one we kind of just it ends yeah. with a cliffhanger. There's no good resolution, so we don't see what's happening. Uh, but I could see this being option for a cartoon. It seems like there's a framework. For something good, yeah, uh, and the the artwork is I think pretty solid for what it is. Uh, I wouldn't mind my kids reading it, yeah. And so I, I thought it was a pretty solid effort for what clearly is self published. And I honestly, you know, going back to what you said, Johnny, about your friend, uh, I think that's one of the problems with self publishing. Uh, we live in an age now where it's great you can totally create something on your own, self publish. The problem is there is value to an editor. There is value to yeah. having someone who's not your friend. Who's there? You actually pay money to look at your work critically and go, you know what? Or you know, you need to improve this. Or even having your friends do it and just be like, do not hold back. Tell me what's not working. Because if you say, oh, it's great, you're doing me a disservice. Mm-hmm. Like that's a that's a you know, uh, I think people have a lot of having worked in the creative realm for mm-hmm. a long time. Like that's one thing you have to get separate your stuff from your work really early on to say, look, be brutal. Tell me what. Tell me what's dumb. Tell me what doesn't work, because if you just say it's great, it's oh, this is a magical thing. It's it's perfect the way it is. I'm gonna be embarrassed when I put this thing out, and everyone's like, "This is fucking dumb." So, well, you know, I. But also in the same respect, I find that, that sometimes this is dumb, but. right. But some people who are artists as well, uh, whatever it is, writing or drawing, I think think sometimes they're either too much of a buddy buddy. And not critical, or they're hypercritical and don't realize maybe the audience this is for. Like, if you handed this comic to a hardcore comic reader, he'd go, "This is juvenile." But maybe that's not your market. You need someone who's like realizes, "Oh, this is a perfect kids book. This is the target market and the reading level and the storytelling level that we need for a nine year old." And they're they're able to kind of nuance that difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is the most extreme example of the probably. A- one of the most well done children's stories ever is where the wild things are. Mm-hmm. It's about a magic, a magical realm about this kid who, you know, journeys for what a thousand days on his boat or whatever it is like, you know, to get to this thing, which is probably really, it's just his imagination, you know, but mm-hmm. it's, it, it's easy to go along and find out, you know, he yeah. thought he was the worst of everything. And then he meets these monsters. It's like, Oh, I need to go back home and listen to my mom. Yeah, kind of like that. Like right. you can have a very simple premise mm-hmm. um, and make it great for kids. This could have been a really simple premise of just there's a bad guy, here's the good guy, he needs to move on, and here's the rules of this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Sometimes I think that um, authors explain too much and they give mm-hmm. too much away, uh, and it's like too complicated and convoluted. Um, whereas I feel like that's where this is really dipping into. It's not that I need more explanation. Sometimes it's like, just let the world build out as it is. You know, mm-hmm. we have our own imaginations. We'll f- we'll figure it out. Yeah. No, that's a val- really a valid point. I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, Star Wars. It starts off with a ship shooting at another. You're not explained the whole politics like, right by the way here's an emperor and here's the right. empire who are these people <laughs> why are they fighting right what galaxy is this where right. did they come from where are they going they didn't yeah, have a big massive exposition mm-hmm. although they did have the like the initial the crawl mm-hmm. uh which i think maybe that's what the beginning part was trying to serve mm-hmm. is the the crawl but it, i think maybe less yeah I, I agree it's like just let the story kind of let let the reader discover the story and the universe yeah. slowly and, and organically mm-hmm 
I think it's a good foundation. And I would really like to see what the writer does in like five, six, seven years. I think the, uh, what's his name? Nick Cannon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after his R&B career. Yeah. Um, uh, no, uh, Nick Bain. Nick Cannon. <laughs> I, I would like Nick to Bain. really see what he's capable of in a few years when he's got more of this under his belt. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, and once again, props to Nick Acuna. The artwork I thought was clean. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I could discern the characters. A lot of times I've had problems with, especially human characters, like discerning who the people are, and they felt very distinctive. The foxes were a little confusing. A little bit. I mean, there's like the fox people. Yeah, every other fox, fox bats, fox <laughs> rabbits, fox raccoons. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I I thought his illustrations served the story great. Mm-hmm. Very magical, colorful, mm-hmm. bright. Yeah. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty 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 good. As so, any uh, final good. thoughts there, Veronica? No, I think I said everything yeah. that I want to yeah. say. Yeah. I don't. And I just want to say thanks to Nick and his and the, his illustrating partner for sending this to us. They contacted us to review their book, and that takes a lot of fucking bravery to be like, "Please review my book." I, I don't know if he's listened to past episodes, but you know we don't hold back. And um, we've had some authors contact us. Yes, we've had some <laughs> very uh, well-known comic book artists <laughs> give us both barrels. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I just want to say, you know, thank you for thinking of us and sending the book to us. Really appreciate it. I think this would be, I think a kid would really enjoy the story. Oh, totally. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's got enough action and moving along. I, I don't think we're the intended audience for this. I think right. it's definitely for yeah. uh, a younger. I think it needs some polishing and maybe it doesn't, some, like, it needs some revision. And adjusting a little bit. Yeah. I, I think if the story, if, if he had gone back and hit this a couple of different times with mm-hmm. revisions. I think this would be like one of those things where like kids absolutely fucking love it mm-hmm. and they read it multiple times. And there's like trading cards. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. This could be one of those things where, yeah, like a magic, the gathering type game is built <laughs> around, around it. Or, right. or like you were saying, you could go, uh, and all the action figures. Yeah. Like little figures or like, yeah. Or like you were saying, Dennis, where it could be developed into a cartoon or some mm-hmm. sort of long running series or something like that. Uh, yeah, it just it just slightly missed the mark. I I, I hope uh, they do a crossover with Archie, <laughs> <laughs> or the or the Nim rats. Oh yeah, that would yeah. be good. Yeah, so they find a portal to the to the the, to the, lab. the, the Nim lab. Yeah, so. Dennis, where can uh, people follow the podcast? Uh, Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us at Gene Explorers Club. All right, thanks for listening, everyone. And this is our first what episode. You, Johnny? Yeah, they don't need to follow. They me. need to follow you. Uh, this is our first episode of our summer special, and thanks for coming back, Veronica. We really appreciate of you yeah, returning. Welcome. Hope the last time wasn't too bad. So, second time was probably worse. Wow. Than the first, but. <laughs> Third time's a charm, right? <laughs> yeah. Next time we'll get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everyone. Just keep feeding me. <laughs> Bye.